Hello friends, Namaskar, this is Sanjay. Welcome to the 20th video in this series and the title of this video is Alternative Conceptions of Learning in Children Understanding Children's Errors as Significant Steps in the Learning Process This happens to be the 20th topic in the CTET CDP syllabus As usual, all videos on our channel including this are available in both English and Hindi versions before we begin, let me just clarify that in some preparatory books, websites and videos, this topic has been misunderstood as alternative concepts. Alternative concepts can be about different types of learning theories or teaching theories or teaching methodologies. And we have already discussed about that in some of the previous videos and we will also touch upon them in some of the upcoming videos. So this specific topic is about alternative conceptions. And alternative concepts and alternative conceptions are two different things. This is also clarified in the syllabus which clearly states alternative conceptions of learning in children and understanding children's errors as a significant steps in the learning process. Now children's errors are connected to alternative conceptions and not concepts. So in this video we'll talk about what are alternative conceptions and their different types and what are their implications we'll see how errors are connected with alternative conceptions and how can we deal with them in the classroom and we will end this video with some sample questions from previous question papers so let's get started so what are these alternative conceptions you can see one image on the screen and you know what this is this is a solar eclipse and there is a scientific explanation for this solar eclipse that is when the moon comes between the earth and the sun then the shadow of the moon falls on the earth and that is visible to us as a solar eclipse or we can also say that it is the moon that is blocking the sun causing the solar eclipse. However, if you look at how this has been explained historically in different countries then in India we say that uh, a demon called Rahu has swallowed the sun and that causes a solar eclipse or in China they say that a celestial dragon eats the sun or in Vietnam they say that a giant frog swallows the sun. Whereas in Korea, they say that uh, there are some dogs in the sky which are stealing the sun and causing the solar eclipse. Whereas in the Nordic countries, they say that a wolf ate the sun. So there is a scientific explanation for this phenomenon and there are several alternative conceptions for the same phenomenon. And if these alternative conceptions are factually incorrect, then they are called as misconceptions. So the definition of alternative conceptions is that uh, they are ideas that are used to explain various concepts and phenomena and that these uh, alternative conceptions do not match the scientific explanation of such concepts and phenomena. Alternative conceptions are nothing but imaginative efforts used to describe and explain the world around us especially when there is no scientific explanation available for them. For example, solar eclipses have been happening for millions of years and when the ancient human beings started seeing the solar eclipses, they had to have some idea as to why is the sun disappearing and they needed some way of understanding it and explaining it and that is how they developed these alternative conceptions. Because they did not know that uh, it is just the moon that is coming in between the earth and the sun, they came up with these alternative ideas that uh, Rahu is uh, eating the sun or a dragon is eating the sun or a frog is eating the sun. Another example could be that in India, Parents tell children that don't wear black when you are going out. Now there is a scientific explanation for that because black absorbs more heat than other colors and if you wear a black shirt and go out then you might get a heat stroke. But there are several alternative conceptions that have developed around this. That is black color is unlucky or black should not be worn if you are going for any auspicious event and black color is also associated with black magic. So this is about how alternative conceptions can develop historically. Next, let us talk about the different types of alternative conceptions. First of all, there can be preconceptions which exist previous to a student coming to class. So these uh, preconceptions could have been learned from the parents, from the family or from the community that the child comes from. And then there can be misconceptions. So these uh, misconceptions may have been developed in class because of some misunderstanding or confusion with the lesson or through the teacher or through the peers or classmates in school. And then there can be quasi-conceptions. 
So these uh, quasi conceptions are alternative conceptions which are correct under certain conditions only. For example, if my parents tell me that black dogs are dangerous, so that is an alternative conception. And I believe it is true. And one day when I'm walking on the road, a black dog actually chases me and tries to bite me. Just because this particular black dog was dangerous, I believe that all black dogs are dangerous. Just because it was correct under one condition, I believe this statement is correct under all conditions. In simple words, we can say that these alternative conceptions, preconceptions, misconceptions and quasi-conceptions are nothing but mis-explanations or misunderstandings. So, what are the implications of these alternative conceptions? If you go to Google and search for Flat Earth Society or Flat Earth Theory, then you'll see that there are actually thousands and thousands of people across the world who believe that the Earth is flat. It is not a globe, but it is flat. Now, this is an alternative conception because scientifically we know that the Earth is a globe, it is round. However, people who believe in the flat Earth theory resist any other information that proves that the Earth is round. So, which means that this flat Earth theory is an alternative conception which is very, very resistant and persistent because they sincerely believe in it. And when an alternative conception is very deeply entrenched in a person's mind, the acquisition of new knowledge is blocked because the person is not willing to accept any new knowledge. So, the alternative conception has to be changed for any new learning to occur. And if the person gets rid of the alternative conception and starts believing in the scientific explanation, then a radical reorganization of knowledge is required in the person's brain because the person has been believing in this alternative conception that the earth is flat for a very, very long time. So, now a complete radical reorganization of that belief and that knowledge in the person's brain is required before the person can start accepting new knowledge. Let us now see how errors are connected to alternative conceptions. When we see a volcano, we see a lot of hot lava coming out of it, we see some explosions, we see a lot of smoke. But the source of that explosions, the lava and the smoke is not the volcano itself. It lies deep within the earth. So similarly, when we see some errors in something that a person is doing or saying, then these are just symptoms. The reasons for these errors are deep within the person's mind. So, these errors can be because of some simple mistakes or they can be because of a misconception. For example, if the person's fundamental knowledge is correct, but there is some clerical error or there is a calculation error or there is some simple confusion, then that is a mistake. And these can be easily corrected because all you need to do is correct the symptom. Whereas, in case of a misconception, it means that the person has an alternative conception in his mind. So, first you have to identify that alternative conception and correct it. Only then you will be able to correct the errors. Otherwise, the person will keep repeating the same errors again and again. Let us now look at how can we deal with these alternative conceptions in the classroom. The first step is to accept that alternative conceptions are normal and everyone will carry some type of alternative conceptions in their mind. It might be small, it might be big, but everyone has one. Next, whenever we come across any errors being committed by children in the classroom, we have to investigate the reasons and the patterns behind such errors. Are they because of simple mistakes or are they because of alternative conceptions? If they are because of alternative conceptions, then we have to understand them first because we cannot confront, we cannot correct anything that we cannot understand. Therefore, we have to understand them first and then we have to confront them. That is, we have to give an alternative perspective. We have to show children that why their alternative conception is wrong and there is a better scientific explanation for that. So, lectures and theoretical methods are not enough because such alternative conceptions are very deeply embedded in a person's mind. So, you cannot confront them and you cannot correct them using just lectures or theoretical methods. So, when you are providing a different perspective or an approach to that particular situation, you have to use a hands-on and an experiential approach. For example, if you want to tell children as to why they should not be wearing black colored clothes when they are going out in summer, then because 
their parents or their family or their community would have told them a specific reason which they believe in it deeply so lectures and theoretical methods are not enough right we have to show them with some experiential approach as to why black color absorbs more heat and that is the reason why they should not be wearing it so once they have been given an alternative perspective and they understand the scientific approach then that knowledge should be reinforced because only through reinforcement and revision the knowledge becomes stronger in a person's mind so these are the basic steps in dealing with alternative conceptions preconceptions or misconceptions in the classroom next let us solve some sample questions from previous question papers the first question is children often develop alternative conceptions and misconceptions about various concepts which of the following statements is not correct in this context alternative conceptions and misconceptions formed by the students should be highly discouraged by the teacher this statement is incorrect because children learn these uh, alternative conceptions or misconceptions by developing it themselves or they learn it from their parents their family or their community so as a teacher you cannot discourage them you have to understand them you have to confront them you have to correct them so you can never discourage them so this is incorrect next formation of alternative conceptions and misconceptions is very natural among children as well as adult as we discussed this is completely natural to have any kind of alternative conceptions or misconceptions in a person's mind so be it a child or be it a adult everyone will have something therefore this statement is correct next a teacher should definitely attend to these alternative conceptions and misconceptions as they are significant in process of teaching and learning we discussed that these alternative conceptions and misconceptions are significant in the process of teaching and learning because they can prevent the acquisition of new knowledge which means that as a teacher you should identify them you should confront them you should correct them and that is what you are doing when you are attending to them next alternative conceptions and misconceptions are not always baseless rather they represent a children's intuitive idea about the world around them now this is a correct statement because if and you talk about why you should not wear black colored clothes while going out in summer it is not baseless right there is a reason for it there is a scientific reason for it but just because maybe the child does not know the scientific reason he or she has an alternative conception so which means that such alternative conceptions and misconceptions are not completely baseless they might have a scientific reason behind them so among the given statements only statement 1 is not correct therefore the answer here is option 1 which of the following beliefs of a teacher is detrimental to students learning now detrimental can mean harmful or bad now we have to identify which of these four statements is incorrect because whichever is an incorrect statement then that is a belief that the teacher should not have errors are a part of the process of learning this is a correct statement whenever we are learning something we definitely will make some errors so this is part of the process of learning next making errors is a shameful act for learners this is an incorrect statement because there is no way that we can learn something significant something difficult or something important without making errors we will make errors somewhere or the other therefore it is not shameful so the statement is incorrect next errors provide an insight into the gaps in the conceptual understanding of the learner so when a child is making some errors in the classroom the teacher should look into the reasons for the error because the reasons can be simple mistakes or they can be alternative conceptions therefore these errors are actually providing an opportunity an insight into the conceptual understanding of the learner so this is a correct statement next learners must be given space to make errors without fear of being reprimanded so whenever we are learning something we will make some errors so we should have the space and the opportunity and the independence to make such errors because if you are discouraging learners from making any errors if you are not giving them any space then you are actually stopping them from learning new things therefore this is a correct statement which means that only one statement is incorrect making errors is a shameful act for the learners so this is a belief that the teacher should not have so answer is option 2 misconceptions among children are abnormal no they are not abnormal they are completely normal atypical no they are typical because every child 
will have some misconceptions at some point natural yes misconceptions alternative conceptions are completely natural are they rare no they are not rare everyone will have some misconception preconception or alternative conception in their mind so option 3 is the correct answer it is important to dash the misconceptions among students should we create misconceptions no should we identify misconceptions absolutely yes because only when we identify misconceptions we can confront them we can correct them should we ignore them no we should not ignore them and should we promote them definitely not therefore the correct answer here is option 2 that is it is important to identify the misconceptions among students misconceptions among students represent which of the following are they extremely flawed and irrational thinking process no definitely not because many a times these uh, misconceptions can be because children don't know the scientific explanation or the scientific explanation could not be explained to them so somebody has just taught them a simple way of understanding something so that becomes a misconception or a alternative conception just because children cannot understand the reason why they should not be wearing black color so somebody must have taught them that it is inauspicious or it, it is unlucky so that children easily understand it so they are not extremely flawed and extremely irrational next do these misconceptions represent higher order emotional and intellectual abilities no they do not because these are just ways in which things have been explained to them or they have understood it this is not higher order emotional or intellectual ability next misconceptions are native and intuitive understanding about concepts this is a correct statement because unless a scientific explanation was available there would be some native and intuitive understanding of various phenomena just like how a solar eclipse has been understood and explained to people over the millennia so this is a correct statement next misconceptions represent severe cognitive deficiencies and neurological disorders this is definitely incorrect therefore the correct answer here is misconceptions among students represent their native and intuitive understanding about concepts and uh, with that we come to the end of this video if you have any questions or feedback please put them in the comment section below and i will see you again very soon in the next part of this video series till then take care stay safe